Hello! Welcome back to the Curse of Monkey Island, episode 3. This is Rocket Baby Dolls, and we have been exploring Puerto Polo. And we have this ventriloquist book. It's some goofy job. So, we'll have a bit of fun with this. Hi, I'm Comedy Mask. And I'm Tragedy Mask. When your sister was in high school, we were on her bedroom wall. And I believe we can use it on at least some of the characters in the game. And let's hope that my uh, speech impediment doesn't blow up to in this episode. I don't remember. Is the water ballet before or after my mad scene? You're no actor. Get off the stage, ya bum. What? But I didn't. Just you be quiet and help me rehearse. <laughs> A pirate by... That was funny once. Okay. We still have more of pure, pure Topolo to, fo to uh, explore. I don't think there's much up here, but... We need to explore all the locations. Curious pile of logs there. And we have a we have a grassy knoll, which sounds a bit ominous. It's a wooden sawhorse supporting that keg of rum. It's too heavy for me to move. Right, we can't do much here. Well, not just yet anyway. And I believe there's two buildings we still need to go to. The first one is here, and there's going to be a lot of lot of dialogue in this episode. And I'm recording two videos in one day. Good evening. At the tone, Caribbean standard time will be 8, 30, 6, and 40. Four seconds. Beep. Okay, I won't do that again. Welcome, patron, to the Barbary Coast, where every haircut is an adventure. Hey. And if you're wanting a haircut, you'll have to wait until I'm finished with Captain Rottingham here. Are you guys pirate barbers? We prefer the term buccaneer hairstylists. Great! Maybe you guys can help me find this huge diamond ring I'm looking for. Diamond ring? Yeah, it's supposedly enormous, and it's on Blood Island. Blood Island? Never heard of it. It's a funny story, really. I need it to lift this curse that's turned my girlfriend into a solid gold statue. Solid gold? Wait a second, did I just share too much? Mm, no. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. Of course you are. Okay then, who are you? Edward Van Helgen. Not the... That's right, mine is the name that pirates fear the most. Edward Snugglecakes Van Helgen. Dude! How would you like to join my ever-growing pirate crew? Your crew? Why would I want to be on your crew? It's gonna be a blast. We're going to Blood Island. Sorry, Threepwood. As much as I'd love to be out at sea again, I could never serve a captain who wasn't a gentleman and who wasn't my equal. Gentlemen? That's me all over. Then prove it. If you can defeat me in a gentleman's duel, I'll join your crew. All right, let's get to dueling. No, 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 there are rules. If you want to duel with me, you have to give me sufficient insults. Mm, okay. Hey, that's a nice shirt. How long have you been colorblind? <laughs> oh, please. Nice cologne you're wearing. Did you actually roll around in dung, or just dab a little behind each ear? That's not the type of insult I had in mind. Did I mention you're a big old bedwetting duty head? No, but I'm still not impressed. How appropriate. You fight like a cow. That's an old one. Come back when you have some fresher material, eh? I don't want to insult you. Why can't we just get along? You went from pirating to hairstyling. Why? The music of the sea is something that takes hold of your soul and never lets go. 
But the life of a sailor is a rough one. And the sea shows no mercy. It was no easy choice to leave. But I realized that I could still enjoy the music of the sea while remaining safely on land. Through affordably priced sea shanty compilation albums? Uh, no. By starting a barbershop quartet, obviously. Obviously, but there are only three of you. Auditions didn't go as well as we'd hoped. We once had a tenor named Dominique, but he left. Artistic differences. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's coming up. I could be the fourth in your barbershop quartet. Uh, no, no, uh, that's okay. I was wrong. We don't need one after all. Oh, come on. I've really got away with a ballad. All right, then. Let's hear what you've got. Be prepared to cover your ears. Or not. Monkey in my pocket and he's stealing all my change. His stare is blank and glassy. I suspect that he's deranged. Oh, my dear, sweet, merciful savior in heaven. Pretty good, huh? You must take an oath now before man and God <laughs> that you will never, ever again sing in public. So what are you telling me exactly? Let me try out for your barbershop quartet again. No! Oh, please, please. The spirit of music is in me. All right. But this is the last time. Once my old man spoke to good King Triton and asked, Why all this senseless fighting? Why can't we men express emotion? Now I've got a friend in the... Great sainted jumping monkeys. What do you think, huh? That was even more atonal than last time. Hey, let me try out another song for your barbershop quartet. Am I just not getting through to you, Threepwood? Come on, this time will be great. Trust me. If you insist. Plunder, plunder, how I wonder how'd you get so doggone pretty? Home to sailors, barbers, tailors, and Puerto Pollo, your capital. Mother of all that we as humans hold sacred. Well? You're actually beginning to make me physically ill. Please, stop. Listen to me sing again. You'll love it this time. I really, really, really don't want to. No, believe me, I'm just getting warmed up. The expression on his face is just priceless. I'm hooked on you, baby, but the seas keep us apart. And there ain't no eye patch big enough to cover up my broken heart. Words. I need more words. My grasp of the language is not sufficient to describe the violent, retching <laughs> nausea your singing is causing me to experience. I'm not following you. Is that a good thing? I've got one song left for you. It's a showstopper. Okay. Whatever. For those cold, dark shipboard nights, We've got boxers, briefs, and tights Made from cotton, silk, or satin In styles Anglo-Dutch and Latin When you sail, don't take a chance Wearing nothing neath your pants Trust, silver's long johns They breathe That's odd What? What? You liked it? No, 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 it was dreadful It's just that my queasiness has subsided but now I'm beginning to taste metal and see spots before my eyes. I'm afraid that your singing is so bad that it has caused me to have a stroke. I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories. No, I couldn't. Oh, come on. I'd really like to hear some of... The year was 1675. We were on a course towards the wreck of the rattling phlegm. Our days were filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Two months into our journey, we realized something was horribly wrong. Were you haunted by the spiteful ghost of a former captain? 
No, a restless spirit would have been a welcome relief compared to the evil we faced. We were all stricken with a melody, a diabolical song that I shall never forget. La 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 Hey, that's kind of catchy. Aye, all too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. We returned with but eight of our crew left. The doomed voyage of the Obsessivo Compulsivo will haunt me forever. That sound is like the Monkey Island theme. Whoa, look at the time. Gotta scoot. Right, so he wants to be challenged like a gentleman. And we have a white glove here. Now there's a challenge to the field of honor. Choose your weapon. I choose this pistol. If I beat you, will you join my crew? The odds of you beating me are so astronomical, I will take that bet. <laughs> Again, I prove to you I'm the greatest duelist in the world. Okay, let's try that again. Haven't I shamed you enough? You haven't even begun to see me shamed. <laughs> Back to the field of honor then. Choose your weapon. Okay, let's not duel with pistols. Let's duel with banjos. I choose the banjo. I accept. You do? What's the matter, Brush Boy? Can't you keep up? Uh, I'm sorry, I just lost myself in the beauty of the melody. Would you like to try again? Right. Let's do this. Sure. I'm just getting warmed up. What's the matter, Brush Boy? Can't you keep up? What? I didn't even press anything. I just got a cramp, that's all. Would you like to try again? Okay. There's like a skip function in this, which I'm going to do before this gets annoying. Sure. I'm just getting warmed up.
You're a pretty good boy. Let's see you follow this. That's good. I'll never beat him. Ooh, he sure knows how to play that banjo. What? You shot my banjo. You can't be sure of that. That shot may have come from the grassy knoll. Of all the low-down tricks, I never heard of anything so low. I completely misjudged you. You are a pirate after all. I'd be proud to join your crew. Great. I'll just pack this stuff up and get ready. And give me back my gun. I'll need two more sailors for my crew. Right, that's one down. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. So? So, it's good to meet you, Mr... Bill. Bill? That's your pirate name, Bill? Cutthroat Bill. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? Are you ever going back to pirating? Maybe. Someday. If I find the right captain. Perfect! I'll be your captain. Onward to Blood Island and high adventure. Wanna come? You a captain? Hardly. I'm the mighty pirate who defeated LeChuck. And what do you have to show for it? I've got a ton of cool stories. Treasure? Immense mounds of gold and diamonds? Solid gold scepters of power? Anything? Well, I've got these nickels. Wooden? Uh, yeah. Some treasure hunter you are. You couldn't find gold in a jewelry shop. I bet I could too, you big old bedwetting duty head. How much would you bet? Well, I've got these nickels. Right. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. How'd you break into the hairstyling industry? I saw an ad to join a barbershop quartet. Got a problem with that? No, that must be very rewarding work. What's that supposed to mean? Mean? Well, just that, you know, cutting hair and um, singing must be just a lot of fun. It's like a party every day. Some days I just don't know how to contain my joy. I get giddy and the laughter bubbles out of me like a sparkling <laughs> fountain of mirth and gaiety. Okay, new topic. Pirate stories. Got any? Okay, here's a story. I started out as a crewman on the raging tightwad, sailing out of Puerto Pollo. The captain was a master treasure hunter, a diviner from some ancient secret society. He had some weird fifth sense when it came to finding objects of value. Don't you mean sixth sense? No. By some cruel trick of nature, he was born without taste buds. But his other senses took over and gave him an uncanny ability to find treasure. We left port without a map, guided only by the captain's keen senses. We spent the first week going around in circles, until we realized the crew's gold earrings were throwing the captain off. After we tossed all our jewelry, gold coins, and belt buckles overboard, we got back on course. Did you ever find any treasure? We sailed for two years, and had finally started back to Plunder Island. But just as we started to doubt him, he paid off. We found sunken treasure right off the coast. Wait a second. Was it an enormous pile of jewelry and gold coins and belt buckles at the bottom of the bay? Exactly. How did you know that? I just had a feeling. Oh, God. Say, uh, what you eating there? Jawbreaker. Is it good? Yep. You don't say much, do you? Nope. It's been a pleasure. Bye. All, all he needs is a pat on the back. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I think we've, well, we've bonded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
I've got nothing to say. I've got nothing to say. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pie. Quiet. Red, huh? Don't distract him while he's working on me. Aye, laddie. You'll have to wait your turn. It's the pirate wheel. Add <laughs> like a crew cut, please. <laughs> Whatever you say, sir. No, stop! <laughs> Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood. I see, and I don't care. I'm a mighty pirate. Ha! What do you mean, ha? I mean just what I say. Ha! If you're a mighty pirate, then I'm bored. I'm mighty enough to defeat LeChuck twice. LeChuck? Ha! Even if he's dead, there's just no excuse for that hair. So you're a ship captain, huh? Not just any ship captain. Don't tell me you've never heard of Captain Rene Rottingham. I've never heard of Captain I'm Rottingham. only the most cunning and well-groomed captain ever to sail the Caribbean. Well, how'd you like to join my crew? Me serve on your crew? Please don't make me break into hysterical laughter while this buffoon is working on my hair. Why don't you want to join my crew? I serve under no man. Oh, boy. Now, just one sec. If there's any treasure to be found, I'm going to be the man to find it. And I'll look absolutely stunning while I'm doing it. Well, I didn't want you on my crew anyway. That's your loss. And boy, lose the ponytail. It's so last year. Did you know you're starting to go gray? I most certainly am not. Uh, don't get me wrong, gray hair suits you. It doesn't... I mean, of course it would. But uh, I don't have to worry about that for several years. If I were you, I'd worry more about those split ends. Split ends? <laughs> I'll have you know I've killed men for comments less slanderous than that. You've got a bald spot starting here in the back. What? You're lying, of course. If you say so. All I know is that there's definitely some kind of shine going on back here. You seem irritable. Is it from your dry scalp? My scalp is lovingly massaged with the finest creams and oils in the world. Twice daily. Yeah, that's a little more than I wanted to know. Your petty jobs and insults mean nothing to me. They're doing great things with dandruff shampoo these days. I suggest you leave, boy, before you force me to defend my honor. Fire! Run for your life! I'm sure the authorities probably have the situation under control. But just in case, Baba, more moisturizer. That's gonna get us nowhere. You seem busy. I'll come back later. Right. Let's have some fun. Station. You've been struck with the hair demons. What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin. The scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas. That's a lie. Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions. Good analogy. This calls for drastic action. I'm bringing in old Ironsides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Rash? That's a bad sign. There's no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No! No! You'll ruin my hair! Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. How did you become a barber pirate? I spent ten years at sea on board the HMS Anathema, the fastest ship in the Scottish Navy. So how did that help you become a barber pirate? It was a clipper ship. Ah. <laughs> Do you know any rousing pirate stories? Well, there is the story of the secret of Bulky Island. 
we were a crew of two score men under the command of Big Jake McJuggernaut, the most powerful captain on the seas. One night in port, Captain Jake heard a tale of an enormous treasure buried somewhere on Bulky Island. We set sail and landed on the island within a fortnight and found the treasure the next morning. Bulky Island? Where's that? You won't find it on any map. Captain Jake took the location of the treasure to his grave. Oh, it was a beautiful sight. A tremendous chest made of solid gold. Big Jake leapt into the hole and wrapped his sinewy arms around the chest. He gathered his resolve, counted to three, filled his lungs and lifted with all his might. The sound of his back cracking brought a grimace to even the most steel-hearted crewmen. By nightfall, the lot of us were lying on the beach, writhing in pain. Why didn't you set up a system of ropes and pulleys? That would have been the weak man's way out. The pirate Angus McFulcrum had followed us to Bulky Island, wanting the treasure for himself. The weakling used a lever and took the chest, laughing at us as he carried it to his ship. And my proud Captain McJuggernaut died in traction, cussing himself for not being strong enough. How would you like to join my crew? You seem like a nice enough sort, Guybrush. But a man cannot serve as my captain unless he earns me respect. And how would a man go about doing that? By besting me in a time-honored test of strength. <laughs> An in-your-face, no-holds-barred cage match to the death? No, I'm talking about the traditional Highland display of strength and virility. The caber toss. What in the world is a caber? The caber is a large tree trunk. We go to the field of competition, and each of us heaves the caber as far as he can. The man whose caber goes the farthest is the winner. That's just about the stupidest sport I've ever heard of. And I watch cable television. Aye, but you cannot argue with tradition. That was for those people who don't know what a caber is. Sounds great. Let's do it. I would never follow such a weak captain. <laughs> right, it's almost time. Let's put this guy out of his misery. How did you do that? Oh, it was nothing really. Just sudden pressure applied below the sternum to expel a foreign object from the windpipe. That's amazing. I owe you my life. From now on... Yes? From now on, that will be known as the Threepwood Maneuver. Nah. <laughs> right. Um, I'm really enjoying this. Oh, it's lovely talking to these guys again. And as you can imagine, the three people we need in our crew are these three gentlemen here. And we've already got Van Helgen. Next time, we will hopefully have McMutton. Cutthroat Bill will come a little, little bit later on. And in the next episode, we will get a haircut. But for now, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you again. Thank you once again for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.